Hi, I'm Tim Constantine. It's political season, silly season. 2024 is upon us. We know it's going to be Joe Biden, maybe. We know it's going to be Donald Trump. We know it's going to be Kamala Harris running with Joe Biden. <gasps> but who's going to be the vice president on the Donald Trump side of the ticket? Joining me to talk about exactly that, David Bozell. David, how are you? Good, Tim. How are you? I'm doing very well. What do you think? There are a number of names floated out there. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I've got who I want, um, and and there's a couple of dark horses uh, uh, that have not been mentioned. And sort of the there's this top ten that uh, that are going around social media primarily. Uh, I would like to see Congressman Byron Donalds uh, out of Naples. Um, I think he's articulate on the economy. I'd like to, as he's severely underutilized in the House, uh, I'd like to see him get about get out, uh, out of the House. I'd like to see a new voice, a new face uh, of Republican politics. Uh, new generation, young new guy. New generation, young guy. Um, I think the president needs to consider somebody young and experienced, if you can find it, that combination. Um, the pick for vice president has almost little to do, has very little to do with whether President Trump will win the race. It has everything to do with setting up 2028. And this person will have a leg up in 2028. And uh, I would like to see Byron Donalds get tapped for that. Dark horse candidate that's not being talked about a lot is, for me, is Devin Nunez. Uh, he runs uh, Trump's media group, uh, again, former member of Congress, so he knows that world. Um, but there's obviously a lot of confidence that the president has expressed in, in Devin to run that, that the run true social and get that off the ground. And um, so that's and he has experience with all the intel issues that the president has always railed against. So he's a little bit of a dark horse candidate for me. Let me run down a list of first who I think it will not be. Uh, sadly, Byron Donalds, it will not be. Mario, uh, Marco Rubio, it will not be. On DeSantis, it will not be. Constitutionally, you are not allowed to have two people from the same state. Donald Trump would have to transfer to somewhere else or one of well, them. Well, my only all counter that, in office. <laughs> my would... only counter to that, Tim, my only counter is Dick Cheney had that issue with W, moved out of Texas in right. October. And I just think if there's, if there's a will, there's a way. Byron Donalds is from Brooklyn. Um, if I'm the, if I'm President Trump, I'm telling the congressman get out of this. <laughs> go go find it. Would have to resign to his seat. He would have to resign his seat. But the, the, that's the now I don't like it Rubio for that reason, because resigning a Senate seat is is right perilous, uh, and that's quite risky. And the same thing for DeSantis. Uh, I will tell you some people I would like to see. Oh, it will also also on the not list. It will not be Christy Nome. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, but. Yeah. Uh, who I'd like to see is, uh, but I don't think will be selected, Marshall Blackburn from Tennessee would be a great vice president uh, and has a great relationship with President Trump and would bring a lot to the ticket, I think. The, I, I think my, my, who I like, but also who I think is the most likely choice. If I had chips and I had to bet, I'd say Tim Scott. Uh, he has been a, a great surrogate out there for the president. He brings a lot to the ticket. The, the, one of the things the Democrats did very effectively in the 2020 election, using the George Floyd issue, they created a dog whistle effect, where if you talked Donald Trump, you were talking racism. And it's not accurate, but they instilled that belief in a big chunk of America, where even conservative black Americans thought, mm, they weren't so sure about Trump, was he racist? And I, you completely erase that. And if you take that away, Donald Trump takes another 18 or 20 points of the black community, yeah, yeah. which makes it very difficult for the Democrats to win. So yeah. I, I think Tim Scott's really smart. He's ready to be president on day one. Uh, he brings a lot to the ticket. He's a good campaigner. And he takes that issue away. So I agree, Tim. If I had to bet, I would probably bet Senator Scott. Uh, my only reservation is I don't really... He had 0.0, .0 in the primary. Okay, that's I'm not fans. I'm not a fan of guys who get 0.0, .0 <laughs> in the primary. Um, but more specifically, his performances during the debates were really quite poor. Uh, he just sometimes he didn't realize that he was there, uh, and the viewer forgot that he was there because he rarely interjected himself. Um, how, how if if 
he's got to improve that skill set against Kamala Harris. I'm going to give you a weird analogy. And I, I use music and rock and roll for analogies for everything. But when you have a hard rock band, yeah. could be Kiss, could be Nazareth, could be anybody, they always slide one or two slow songs just to balance out the album because you can't bang, 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 bang for 10 songs. You got to breathe at some point. Yeah. Tim Scott is the slow song to Donald Trump. Donald Trump bangs and bangs and bangs and bangs. And then you have this very gentle, polite, genuine man yeah. who is offsetting that. And the vice president in the big picture is the equivalent of one or two songs on the album. Right, right. And so I think Tim Scott pr creates a unique balance in that process. I totally, I totally uh, get that. Uh, the number one job of the vice president candidate, like, is to not upstage the number one. And I don't think Tim Scott is at any risk of upstaging President Trump. I mean, very few people could, uh, but, but Tim Scott's not gonna be that guy. So again, check that box. Uh, so there's a lot, of, look, I, I agree politically, I agree uh, visually, you know, how that would look. I agree with the, with the need of the Republican Party to present a different visual as to what they stand for and whom they represent and, 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 and essentially presenting a more inclusive uh, uh, presentation um, out there to the public eye. So Tim Scott, you know, checks that box. Final question, and that is this process gets stretched out and I, there's a little teaser to the people of the Dakotas or there's a little P teaser to Ohio. And there, yeah. There's always, you know, ooh, so-and-so. could be Abbott out of yeah. Texas. It won't be. But, it, you know, there's always that, that uh, consideration. How long will Donald Trump wait to announce who it is going to be? As long as humanly possible. <clears throat> I mean, he'll probably call the printing vendors and say, how long can I wait to drop you know, the name on the convention floor? Uh, and they'll say, Mr. President, uh, seven days, and that'll be it. And, and, and they'll probably do an event the weekend before the convention so they can ride into the convention uh, with that kind of momentum. But he'll, 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 he'll ride this out. It's good speculation. You get a lot, every PR firm in the country representing any potential VP pick is going to be leaking their client's name to the press just to get their client's name in the press. Um, and that's part of the game. For America, he is David Bozell. I'm Tim Constantine from the Washington Times. Thank you.